everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna set up a remote user VPN in the new controller 7.0.23. We're also gonna create some firewall rules to prevent the VPN users to specific networks. I did a video on this in July, 2020, but the interface has changed quite a bit. I'll show you the VPN configuration. I'll be doing it on my iPhone, but you could do the same on your Windows machine. I'll also show you the remote user VPN up and running and the blocking rules that take effect so we can't get to networks we're not supposed to. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. And if you'd like to support the channel, we do have affiliate links down in the description below. So first, let's take a look at a diagram. What I'm going to be using is my UDM SE, but you could do this on a UDM Pro, a normal base UDM, or a USG. I have my UDM SE connecting to the internet, and then I have a Synology NAS sitting off my network at 192.168.10.220. And we're going to want the remote users to be able to access that. On the other side, we have our remote users. We're going to put them in the subnet of 192.168.10.220. 68.1/24 and we only want them to have access to that Synology NAS so they can maybe access some files. The first thing we need to set up is the remote user VPN. So let's go over to the UDMSE. From the dashboard page of the UDMSE, we need to click on the settings wheel, and then on the left-hand pane, we could see that we have a VPN option. At the top it says VPN server traditional remote access alternative to teleport. Configure a VPN client on your remote device to connect. So we're gonna enable this VPN server. The type is gonna be L2TP, and then we need to put in a pre-shared key. So this is the pre-shared key they gave us. For this video, I'm just gonna put in test one, two, three, four, but you wanna make sure that you have a strong password. Now we have our server address. So what interface are these VPN users gonna be connecting to? Right now, I only have WAN one plugged in, but if I had a secondary WAN two connection, they could go in through there. Next up, we have our user authentication, which we don't have any users yet. So I'm gonna create a new user. I'm gonna call it Cody, and we'll give it a password of test1234, and then we'll press create user. Now, if we look below, we have advanced configuration, and it's set to auto, so this will automatically pick a subnet for us. I'm gonna switch it over to manual. The network name, we'll leave it at VPN server. The user list or a radius profile, I'm gonna leave it at default, but you can create a whole bunch of different radius profiles if you'd like. And then we're gonna change the gateway and subnet. So 192.168.68.1, and that's a slash 24, so we have 249 usable hosts. The name servers, you could choose whichever you want. I'm gonna put in my Pi, and then I'm gonna put in Cloudflare. We're not gonna expose the remote user VPN to a site-to-site -site VPN, because I don't have one created. And then require strong authentication. So this is to enable MS Chap version two. Right now, as it stands, this would be running MS Chap version one. We're gonna wanna run version two. And then it says allow weak ciphers, which we don't want. So we'll leave that unchecked and press apply changes. Now we need to get this adapter into my iPhone. So we could see VPN, but we need to scroll down to general. And then we need to go to VPN and device management. And then we're gonna add a VPN configuration. The type is going to be L2TP. The description, you could give it whatever you want. I'll call it YouTube. The server is going to be your public IP address or FQDN. The account is going to be your username. And the password is going to be your password for your user. So test1234. And then we have that secret, which is also test1234. And then we just need to press done. Now we see the YouTube adapter has been added. We need to connect. Okay, and you can see in the top right that we are connected to the VPN. So now let's try and ping some devices that are within my network. We haven't added any firewall rules, so this VPN could access literally everything within our network or our VLANs. So I have a pro aggregation switch on 192.168.10.15. So let's go ahead and ping that. And we can see that the requests are going through, which we really don't want them to be able to get there. So let's do some firewall rules. So first, I've already created a group RFC 1918, and I did that for my initial firewall rules, but I'll show you what that looks like. If we click on profiles and then go to port groups, we could see that I have this RFC 1918. And all this is, is our private IPv4 addresses. So 192.168.0.0 slash 16, 172.16.0.0 slash 12, 
and 10.0.0.0 slash 8. So now we'll go over to firewall and security and we're going to want to create a new rule. So this rule is going to be done under the LAN out. So our VPN rules will all be done under LAN out. And I'm going to call this block VPN to networks. We're going to have the action of drop, the protocols of all, the source type will be a port slash IP group, and the IP for address group will be that RFC 1918. And the destination will be the exact same thing. And then we'll press apply changes. Now going back to my phone, if I press ping again, these packets should be dropped. And we can see that the requests are now being timed out by that one firewall rule. So we can't get to any networks. But what we want to do, we want to make sure that we could still access my Synology NAS. So we need to put an allow rule in. So to allow my VPN access to my Synology NAS, we're going to create a port or IP group. We'll create the new group. We'll call it VPN users. And then it will be an IPv4 address subnet. So we'll use the VPN subnet of 192.168.68.0/24, and we're going to add it. And then we'll press apply changes. Now the group's been added, we need to create a new rule. So this new rule will still be done under LAN out. It's going to be allow VPN to NAS. The action will be accept protocols all. The source address will be our IPv4 address group of VPN users. In the destination, we're just going to give it an IP address. So the IP of my NAS would be 192.168.10.220. And then we'll press apply changes. So here we can see rule 2000 and rule 2001. And the top 2000 rule is to block our VPN users. We need to drag and drop the allow VPN to NAS above the block rule. So I'll grab the rule. And now the allow VPN to NAS is rule 2000. So if we go back to my phone, we still won't be able to ping 10.15. But we should be able to ping 10.220. And there you go. You can see that we're able to access our Synology NAS. One really big issue with the remote user VPNs for the firewall rules, I could still hit every single gateway that I've created. So all of my VLAN gateways. We go back to the ping application. I could ping 192.168.10.1. I could ping 20.1. 30.1, 40.1, 50.1, whatever VLANs you've created. I tried adding a VPN firewall rule to every single interface, but there's no way to block out the VPN users from getting to your gateways. And this is a major issue. We don't want our users to be able to hit our UDM login page. So hopefully this is something that Ubiquity will fix. I know it's been an ongoing issue since the USG3, and there's a post about it from a couple years ago. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.